Ahoy, book readers! Today we're weighing anchor and setting sail on a literary voyage. Let's get nautical, nautical. First on our list of books set on ships is Fever Dream by George R. R. Martin. Vampires, steamboats, the M-I, crooked letter, crooked letter I. Anybody else learn how to spell Mississippi that way? Vampires and steamboats is a weird mashup that works, and it moves at a steady pace in this book. Joshua York is one of the main characters. He's a vampire who is a good vampire. He doesn't want to hurt anybody. And he teams up with a human sidekick named Captain Abner Marsh, which is a great name, by the way. Consider naming your first child that if you want. Both of these characters aboard the steamship called the Fever Dream, which they want to create as the fastest and best ship on the mighty Mississippi. This book has a battle of old school versus new school, with uh, good versus evil in a vampiric power struggle. There are two understated vampires that are excellent main characters, and you'll either come to love or hate them. And by understated, I mean they aren't the over-the-top versions of fantastic creatures you see in some books, movies, and shows. Bottom line, George R. R. Martin makes it kind of believable that there are some vampires living in a swamp. And if you like how Game of Thrones always has that little carrot of hope dangling in front of you, you'll enjoy this book. There's only one book that comes to mind when I think of vampires, and that's Twilight. Say it out loud. Vampires on steamboats in the 1800s. This book will leave you wondering, could Damon Julian actually be the Night King? Next up is The North Water by Ian McGuire. Flawed surgeon Patrick Sumner is on a whaling ship bound for the Arctic Circle. Then there's a violent murder on board. He's forced to step in and stop the killer. The man that he's been tasked to stop is Henry Drax. Such a great evil name for a savage sociopath. Just a pure primal man with no remorse whatsoever. All of his menacing lines are just... You'd better not be squeamish, though, if you're going to read this book, because there are lots of blood and guts. The writing is absolutely dripping with graphic descriptions. It reflects the dirty job these whalers have. Eat your heart out, Mike Rowe. Vibes, I'd say, it's brutal and gritty. So maybe something like Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy because of just the gratuitous violence. The North Water will leave you wondering, should I book that Alaskan cruise after all? And we're full steam ahead to the next one, The Stranger in the Lifeboat by Mitch Albom, the author of Tuesdays with Maury. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but if you're interested in questions of faith, prayer, suffering, you'll probably enjoy this book. The description of it is, a group of shipwrecked passengers from a luxury cruise liner pull a strange man from the sea. He claims to be God and says he can only save them if they believe in him. The story is narrated by Benji, one of the passengers, via a notebook that's discovered by a detective a year later and the empty life raft that's washed ashore. It's a page turner that'll give you goosebumps because even though you know what's coming, you still don't understand how or why. It's clear that this book has major Life of Pi vibes. You'll be wondering what's real, what's not, and who this passenger is as the story unfolds. The Stranger in the Lifeboat will leave you wondering, what mysteries would my personal diary reveal? Next up is Enemy of All Mankind, a true story of piracy, power, and history's first global manhunt by Stephen Johnson. And how can that title not hook you? This is the real story of a 17th century buccaneer, Henry Every, who was kind of a celebrity in his time thanks to his plundering an Indian treasure ship that was supposedly loaded with wealth. Dare I say, booty? Historical facts, check. Political implications, check. Sordid details that will make you romanticize piracy way less, unfortunately, check. This book is proof that truth is often better than fiction, with lots of insights into pirate life, imperialism, and so much more. This is a throwback to classic swashbuckling books like Treasure Island, but way more real and graphic. It will leave you wondering, yo ho ho, is a pirate's life really for me? Probably and hopefully not. The Sea Wolf by Jack London, the writer so great that they named a city after him. A bookish gentleman, Humphrey Van Weyden, survives a collision between two ships, only get picked up by a sealing schooner and the ruthless, tough-as-nails Captain Wolf Larsen. Oh. However, Larsen isn't just Schwarzenegger of the sea. He's a fascinating combination of brawn and brains, not just gifted physically, but verbally, holding his own against Humphrey's intellectual arguments. Side note, did Schwarzenegger do a naval movie? Because he would have made a killer submarine captain. Humphrey, aka Hump, toughens up over the course of the story. There's a love angle that's just kind of blah and I wish wasn't there, and it has a weak ending, so this book definitely has its faults. Overall, though, it's a fun adventure with some light philosophical moments in there and some great back and forth between Hump and Wolf Larsen. Side note, Wolf Larsen would make a great name for a hockey player. 
The sea wolf will leave you wondering, werewolf, there wolf, sea wolf, be wolf. Next is another pirate book with a super long name. Pirate Hunters, Treasure, Obsession, and the Search for a Legendary Pirate Ship by Robert Curson. I took a nautical archaeology class in college and I've always been fascinated with anything related to sunken ships and booty. In this book, two deep sea divers and pirate hunters named John Chatterton and John Matera search for the Golden Fleece. The ship of this lesser known pirate, Joseph Bannister, sunk in 1686 after a battle. You'll learn some interesting things about the golden age of piracy and day-to-day -day pirate life. I'd say most of it would probably get like a PG rating, but there may be a few sections that would be rated R. Surprisingly, it has a satisfying ending, which is not something you'd expect from a book about searching for long lost fill in the blank. We're not going Sasquatch hunting. There's an actual payoff here. Ye be warned though, there's quite a bit of backstory about the pirate hunters themselves that you have to wade through to get to the meat of the story. The vibes in this one are that in-depth documentary about dolphins where you watch the trailer and then suddenly realized eight hours later that you were completely invested in the social structure of this dolphin pod. And it'll leave you wondering if a ship sinks in the high sea and no one is around to see it, does it still make a splash? So there you have it. Six ship-shaped books this landlubber loves, and you may too. Remember to like and subscribe. Happy reading.